probably want to live in that building. Not made by him. They really want to see Jesus. The Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart. And they shall see God. Give to the Lord and these quiet hands. They did a wonderful job. Quiet hands. You can keep saying the this, keep saying the this. Today's message is about the condition of the human heart. The heart of every Christian is filled with compassion. I really want to know and understand what it means to be Christian. It simply means that you love God and you love people. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied my every groan. Long as I live while troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Compassion is defined as concern for the troubles of another, pity or sympathy. Christianity has often confused many unbelievers because of the lack of compassion demonstrated by churchgoers both inside and outside of the church. This is a transition time for not only uh, the body of Christ but also our congregation because God is going to challenge us to move beyond our comfort zones and our circles of influence and begin really sharing with people what God has said to our hearts. This means that our friends and our comfort uh, affiliates are not going to be the only ones in which we share the good news of the kingdom. We must understand that God has not called us from sin unto salvation to only be around certain people. Christianity has often confused many unbelievers because of the lack of compassion demonstrated by churchgoers both inside and outside of the church. Yeah. And what this tends to look like is, is that we have a special way that we treat people at church, but when we get to Bible, we act like we don't see. <laughs> Unfortunately for the church, people tend to remember more negative experiences than positive experiences in the church. Over the years, the church has been involved, the universal body of Christ has been involved in many scandals and wars and um, systems of abuse and hurt that have left negative impact and impression on those who still claim an affiliation with the church. And because that many times those negative experiences in the lives of some believers outweigh the positive ones, it has a definite effect on how we receive the word of God. Jesus said it this way, that when the sower went to sow, he sowed some seeds and they fell among thorns. And he said that represents when the word of God is preached by Pastor Boyce. It gets around those people who have had some of those negative experiences. And that word that you received on July 29th gets choked out by all those people that remember the bad that things that the church has done. And so Jesus tells another example that the sower began to sow seeds among rocky ground. And that parable is 
told to represent the condition of the human heart at the time that it receives the word. It may not be perhaps uh, that somebody around you has said something negative about the church. It may just be that your heart towards the church is, is, is conditioned in such a way that when in time something positive is shared due to your own insufficiencies and inabilities, you are unable to receive what God is saying. But the portion of the church that I am easily and readily available to deal with is that portion that receives the word on, on good soil and that soil and that seed begin to take root and it brings forth good fruit. And then the Bible says, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Unfortunately for the church, people tend to remember more negative experiences than positive experiences with the church. But I, however, fortunately have had more positive experiences than negative experiences with the church. I remember good women like the lady mother Margaret Bennett, who was one of the mothers of our church at, at Mount Zion. And every time that she would see us, she would talk to us about the Word of God. She would not just wait until we got to church on Sunday, but we would go by her house and she would babysit us when we would see her at various events in the community she always had a word from the Lord and so early in my life church transitioned from being just a place to being a people meaning that every time I saw somebody who had a word from the Lord I experienced the church and because of that I understood that uh, she said she read her Bible every day and every night before going to bed and as a boy I would understand that the word of God had power and if I wanted some of that power, I needed to learn how to read the Bible for myself. Uh, there was a time in life it really didn't even hinder me to miss Bible study, but not because of the lack of fellowship, but I knew how to read the Bible for myself. And so when it was time for me to come back to Bible study, I would often discover that the people who had been going for several weeks uh, had read a word that was in it. <laughs> and so I understand that we must all take the word to have special meaning for ourselves. This was not because of the idea fell out of the sky. This was because of a positive impression that was made upon my life by somebody who was a member of the body of Christ. And so it is with you. You have had some positive experiences with people from the church. People in the body of Christ have helped you. They have fixed something that was broken in your house. They have gave you a free month's rent in your house. They have allowed you to do some things uh, that, were unable, that you were unable to do uh, in other areas of your life. And, and because you have experienced those things uh, that were positive, uh, God wants you to do ye also likewise. Uh, he wants you to duplicate that same help and service that was given unto you. Uh, not because that person is good, uh, but because God is good. And because God is good, he, His grace and mercy allowed that person to help you in such a way that you can go and demonstrate love to the body of Christ. Um, Paul Jones said it this way, my good days outweigh my bad days. And because my good days outweigh my bad days, I won't complain. The positive experiences that we have had with the church have inspired me to do good works because of the examples of, of compassion shared unto me by members of the body of Christ. God wants us as the church to share good works with, the, with hearts that are filled with compassion, hearts that are filled with concern about the troubles of hurting humanity, compassion that is filled with sympathy and empathy for those who are less fortunate. Jesus said the blind see, the lame walk, and the poor have good news brought unto them. That is simply the gospel. When you see someone who is hurting and has been wounded and has been down trodden by the pains and pressures of life, uh, something on the inside of you ought to be moved uh, with compassion enough to respond in a way uh, that is out of the ordinary. Uh, it takes anybody uh, in this day and age can just show up to church. Uh, God or the devil is really unmoved uh, by a mass group of people just showing up to church. Uh, what he is looking for is a body of believers whose hearts uh, are filled with compassion. Uh, so that 
when we see a problem and we see a need, that we will respond exceptionally and considerably to that need. We must work diligently to change the perception that the church is callous and careless about the troubles of humanity. And whether you believe it or not, there's some folk in this room who have literally said that we should only help people that are members of the church. We should only help people that have their names on the roll. That we should only help people that we actually know. But then the reality is that's not gospel, nor is the kingdom. Because a neighbor is not somebody that you know or who lives next door to you. A neighbor is anybody that's in need. And when the Bible says that these people come into contact with us, when we help them, we actually are entertaining angels because he has sent them to us so that we can see where our heart really is. If your heart is filled with negativity and deceit and selfishness, when God sends somebody your way, you will not be led to help anybody. But when your heart is filled with compassion, if you have the ability to help, you are moved because you see their pain. You are moved because you see their situation. You are moved because you know that you might be in that position one day yourself. So if I were you, I would change my attitude and take that advantage of the opportunity to help somebody. God cared enough for us to sacrifice his son Jesus for our sins. And we should care enough for God by sacrificing our time, our talent, and our treasure for the troubles of humanity. If we truly love the Lord, we will do good works for the Lord's church. Luke 10 records the famous parable of the Good Samaritan. And this is a name and a marker that was placed on this parable by medieval theologians. This was not the name that Jesus had given to the parable, but it was understood that the Samaritans were a different race and a half-breed of the Jewish people. And the word Samaritan was actually a pejorative term that was placed upon those who were half-kins people to the people of Israel. This was the northern kingdom. This was the land that had divided with the ten tribes and its descendants after they had returned from captivity in Babylon. And the tribes of Judah and the tribes of Benjamin had distinguished themselves from those who were from the northern area because they believed that they had commingled and mixed their beliefs with those that were of foreign and idol gods. Luke 10 records the parable of the Good Samaritan and Jesus told this parable to demonstrate the true, true meaning of what it meant to be a good neighbor. It's easy to discuss neighborliness in the abstract. It's easy to talk about like a good neighbor, you're like state farm, you're always there. But if we were to do a survey of those that are closest to you and those that are near you that will really exemplify and demonstrate whether or not we are good neighbors. The Jesus gives a test to this young lawyer, this young expert Bible scholar, this teacher of the law who was seeking to justify himself and he says, who is my neighbor? Do you pause to help others when you see injustice or hurt? Do you actually are moved with compassion in your heart when you see somebody going through the pains of the negative experiences of life? Do you pause when you see injustice or hurt? Or are you like the priest and the Levite? Do you look for a way to escape? Do you send them to somebody else? Do you tell them to go across town and get help somewhere else when God has sent these persons to you? You are never more like Christ than when you feel another's hurt and seek to do something about it. You will say to yourself, I know God has sent this person to me for a reason. God has placed this person at my pathway because he wants me to do something about it. I know that I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved us. I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know that he can do 
exceeding abundantly above all we ask a thing, not because of our own power, because his power is working in me. I'm working on a building, and it's a true foundation. I'm lifting up a blood stain banner for the Lord, and when I get through working on this old building, I'm going up to heaven. To get my reward. Got any Bible readers in here today? You're never more Christ-like than when you feel another's hurt and seek to help. But many of us are unable to feel the hurt and pains of others because we feel that we have arrived. We feel that we have been like George Jefferson who passed away on this week and said we moved on up into the deluxe apartment in the sky. Fish don't fry in the kitchen. Bean don't burn on the grill. It took a whole lot of try. We think our good works has gotten us to where we are today. But we have forgotten about the grace of God. We forgot when we were eating beans out of a can. When we were stealing lights from somebody's house next door with the drop cord hanging down. We forgot how we were taking baths out of a bucket and eating beans out of a can. We forget that God has been good unto us. So because God has been good to us, we need to be good unto others. Good works must be filled with hearts of compassion. God's family is filled with hearts of full of compassion. God's family is not callous and careless. God's family is not mean-spirited and selfish. God's family is not negative and a nuisance. But God's family is one that does good works. Compassionate hearts leads to good works performed both inside and outside of the church. Our actions speak louder than words. God's family does good works. Text today raises the question, how does God's family do good works? The first lesson that we need to learn today is that we need to show compassion in the presence of pain. Jesus tells the parable of a certain man who was on the road from Jericho, from Jerusalem down to Jericho. This was a 17-mile journey from church that would lead one to go down a winding and a dangerous road. If you travel to Jerusalem today and travel down to Jericho, you will see many caves and nooks and crannies where there are ideal places for robbers and thieves to hang out to attack some unexpected person who was traveling perhaps from church while they were on the road. And in Jesus' tells the story, he says that this certain man was beaten and fell among thieves. He was beaten and robbed and left for dead. The thieves thought they had killed the man. And so he tells the story to help highlight the point that two good guys had passed this man by before the least likely person who they would have thought would have helped this man would appear to him on the road. The first man that shows up was the preacher. Everybody likes to talk bad about the preacher and say what preachers ain't doing and y'all know them preachers ain't right and that's why the church is so messed up because of the preacher. Well if we're talking about this preacher and that's our assessment then your attitude will be justified because this preacher had just left church. He saw somebody that was beat up on the side of the road and he didn't want to mess up his pretty white robe and he decided to pass by the man and he kept walking by just like some of us do when we get to buy low and act like we didn't see him and so just for those of us who like to point the feet finger at the preacher there's another character that appears in the story by the name of the Levite and the Levite was the lay leader in the church the Levite was the one that was elected by the congregation to be in leadership in support of the preacher the Levite had saw the man, the same man that the preacher saw, who was beaten and robbed and left for dead. He actually takes a closer look and he 
he says in his mind, you had no business going down the Jericho Road when you left Spartanburg Street. You know that there's some ruthless people in that neighborhood. You know there's some robbers and liquor drinkers and crackheads. Mama should have told you that you should have never walked down Spartanburg Street after 7 o'clock at night. And so the Levite took a closer look, stepped over the man, and passed by on the other side. Jesus said that was a third character, thank God, that appeared in this story. The Bible says a man was going down, and when he came the way, he said, but a Samaritan was on his journey. He came up to him, and when he saw the man, he had compassion. That's shouting music right there. Somebody ought to be clapping their hand, because somebody saw you strung out. Somebody saw you high as a kite. Somebody saw you with vomit coming out of your mouth. 